otherwise by its merely work and neither by merely work nor by dropping all the work one will attain that supreme state <coughs> so here now comes this portion which generally people say it is meant only for the householder but it is not so it is meant for everybody there are some aspects of this which are meant specifically for householder there are very few but otherwise it can be applied by everyone it's a very famous portion so let us read that ritam ja swadhyaya pravachane cha ृतम च स्वाध्याय प्रवचने स्वाध्याय प्रवचने स्वाध्याय प्रवचने स्वाध्याय प्रवचने स्वाध्याय प्रवचने अग्निहोत्रम च स्वाध्याय प्रवचने स्वाध्याय प्रवचने मनुषं च स्वाध्याय प्रवचने प्रजा च स्वाध्याय प्रवचने जन स्वाध्याय प्रवचने प्रजाति स्वाध्याय प्रवचने सत्यम सत्यवचाराधीतर तपैति तपो निपौरुषि स्वाध्याय प्रवचने नाको मौगल्य तपस्तप दिस पोर्शन इज कॉल्ड स्वाध्याय प्रशंसा द प्रेज ऑफ स्वाध्याय यू कैन काउंट हाउ मेनी टाइम्स स्वाध्याय प्रवचने चाह कम काउंट एंड टेल हाउ मेनी टाइम्स यू डिटेल ट्वेल्व टाइम्स स्वाध्याय एंड प्रवचन अगेन यू विल से इन द कॉन्वोकेशन एड्रेस ऑफ स्वाध्याय प्रवचनाभ्याम न प्रमदित अव्यम डोंट पोस्टोन स्वाध्याय एंड प्रवचन सो दिस पोर्शन नाउ गिव्स अस द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ स्वाध्याय एंड प्रवचन एंड कंबाइन इट विथ एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ दैट वेन इज अतम च स्वाध्याय प्रवचन च So first we come to swadhyaya and pravachan. What is swadhyaya? Different meaning the word swadhyaya has. First meaning of the word swadhyaya is if we just do some part or recital or chanting, then that is called swadhyaya. So in the beginning of the class, what we are doing, that is called swadhyaya chant. Now I am coming to a different meaning, one by one. The first one is chanting. So regularly, yeah. So remember, this is not a one-time sadhana. Regularly, when one is doing that, every day, let us say, somebody chants Vishnu Sahasra, or somebody chants one chapter of the Gita, or Ram Raksha Sutra. Every day, sadhana. 
somebody that Sundar can't pass, especially during the Navaratri, they do that. Take the Navaratri. So that, that is one meaning is Swadhyaya. <coughs> Second meaning of Swadhyaya is to study the scripture with a teacher. So that one will understand what the Shastra's vision is very clearly. Because it is very subtle. Even in the Upanishad itself we saw so many times we don't know which word is to be interpreted in which form, which way. <clears throat> so, second meaning is to study the scripture with a teacher. Third then is the self-study. Study of scriptures by one's own self. Having studied with a teacher, having got the vision, then to study by oneself and try to imbibe it deeper. And that is called as Swadhyaya. So first is chanting or recital. Second is to study with a teacher. Third is to self-study. Fourth, as a result of studying the scripture, when I become aware of my own flaws, my own impurity, as well as the brilliance and beauty that I am the Supreme Brahma. Then that Swadhyaya is adhyayana of one's own self. It is not study of the scripture after that. Then it becomes study of one's own individuality and one's own reality. Then the scripture becomes like a mirror. The earlier things must have happened, no, for that. Suddenly I can't take the book and say, you know, the scripture is the mirror and I want to start studying. So if I studied with a teacher, I have got the right understanding of the Shastra, got the vision from the teacher, and then we start studying by ourselves, reflecting, and then we start introspecting that, then the scripture has become the mirror, that each aspect, of the scripture is connected to me. Because human mind is very peculiar. If somebody comes and points out our flaw, our ego gets hurt. Who is he to tell? But if we discover our own flaw, it is still manageable. So, the scripture study becomes the need to study my own self. That is Swa Adhyaya. But it doesn't stop with that. The effort that I put in to overcome my limitations and negativities or the impurities, that is also Swa Adhyaya. Because the purpose of Swa Adhyaya is that if I simply study the book and become aware of the impurities, the swadhyaya is not complete because it has not served the purpose. So swa adhyayan, swa nirikshan, swa shuddhikaran, all the three have to have. I have to study, I have to know what are my flaws and I have to correct. And should be done. Purify yourself. There is a sign saying in Sanskrit, it is not written in the Shastra anywhere like that. I am just saying it in Sanskrit that Swa Adhyaya is to study oneself. Swanidhi Shanam is introspect, know your own self. And Swa Manas should be done. Purify your own mind. So the idea is that when we do all this, then it is Swadhyaya. And Swadhyaya must be done every day. Here twelve times is given there. Why? Because Swadhyaya keeps us focused. That what is the goal of life? Why have I come here? This life is so short and temporary. In that how much of distraction is there? And how many small, petty little things they preoccupy our mind. 
somebody didn't talk to me properly, somebody did not uh, smile at me, somebody said like this to me, somebody did this to me, are you one? And petty little things we get caught. So keep oneself focused. That goal is this to realize my own true self. That is the goal. And only Swadhyaya gives that. See, that is the only issue. Anything else in the world does it give us a goal of life, the clarity that what is the goal of life. Other things may give us some comfort, some luxury, some way to live in the world, some smarter way to handle certain things. But the goal of life, the purpose why am I, why I am here, that is not made clear to us. Only when I am studying the scripture, when we have come in touch with the wisdom of the great masters, do we even come to know that there is a Atma, there is a Self and then there is, that is me and it is possible to realize in this life, all that we know only when we come in contact with the Shastra. Even basic thing, forget Self, even basic discrimination of right and wrong, of Dharma and Adharma is not known by us. Those who are not in the touch with the Shastra, Somewhere or the other, the mind takes it for granted that whatever I feel right, I will do. That is called Pachanda Bhutti. Do as one feels right. 16th chapter Bhagavan says, Tasmat Shastram Pramanam says, Shastra is the valid means of knowledge. Karya Karya Vyavasthitao. In what should be done, what should not be done. And our culture is such that we have the eternal principles which is a Shruti. And then the Smriti, which is the principles adapted for changing time. Through both these we determine what is the truth, what is right, what is wrong, how to live. Until we don't come in touch with the Shastra, even the Vivek Buddhi will not arrive. That there is a Buddhi also will not be known. That there is a buddhi and the special capacity of that buddhi is atma, nanatma, vivek. All that is not even known to us till we come to the shastra. That's why one of the Subhashita says, Sarvasya Lochanam Shastra. That scriptures are the eyes of everybody. Meaning we have to live the life with the vision of the scripture. Without that, just like without eyes we cannot function properly. Same way, without the right vision, we cannot function properly. And that right vision comes to us from the study. Not only we get introduced to the right vision, we remain focused on the right vision through constant study. Forty years and more Gurudev spoke on the Gita and the Upanishads, morning and evening, morning and evening. He lived this Vajaya Pravachanesha, What was the need for him? But he still did. There is a joy in that person. It is, after some time it is no more a forced sadhana. One revels in the knowledge of the scripture. So that is the way one did. There is one Mahatma, a realized master. He was reading the Upanishad. So one devotee came and asked him, Mahatma Ji, why are you studying the Upanishad? He is saying, I am reading my own Guru. Not as an ego. He is saying, this is the glory of the self and I am that self. He is written here. So Swadhyaya can bring us to that state. So it will keep, give us the goal of life, it will keep us focused on the goal of life and third and most important, it will give us the means to reach that goal. And what is the means? How to reach there? Because it is not a straight path that everybody walks on that and goes. Each one's temperament is different, vasana baggage is different. There is no clear-cut path. Each one has to find their own path. Though there is a time-tested method and though there is the different steps which are given to us, there are all these which are 
provided to us, but we have to find our own way and we have to walk alone and discover that. So the vision of life, the focus on it and the means to realize it, all the three come to us from the Swadhyaya. Hence it is Swadhyaya Pravachana Bhyamna Pramadita Bhyamna. So these are different meanings of Swadhyaya. First, chanting. Second, study of the scriptures with the teacher. Third, self-study of the scriptures. Fourth, studying of one's own self and knowing the flaws. Fifth, ability to correct all the flaws. Sixth, the goal of life, the focus on it and the means to realize. These are different meanings of Swadhyaya. Do I stop with Swadhyaya? Why is Swadhyaya not enough for us? Why Pravachan is to be added? Ah, one important thing here. In Shankaracharya's is Bhashya when he speaks about Swadhyaya, he says, Swadhyaya Adhinam hi Artha Jnanam. Adhinam he says. Adhinam literally means subjugation or dependent. Artha Jnanam here is not Artha Jnanam. Jnana of wealth. Artha Jnana here is the goal of life. Swadhyaya Adhinam hi Artha Jnana. So he says that the goal of life is dependent on the study of the scripture. That's why we said it is only the Shastra which gives us the clarity of what is the goal of life. Even though everybody says goal of life is happiness, there is happiness. You ask them what happiness, there is happiness is state of mind. State of mind is the goal of life. Not possible. That keeps changing. It can be a means, sadhana, to be happy at all times, to be equanimous at all times, but that cannot be the goal of it. So he says here, Swadhyaya Dhinam hi Artha Jnanam. Artha Jnanayatam cha Param Shreyaha. And only when we have that knowledge of that self, Param Shreyaha, that is moksha or freedom or supreme happiness is possible. Pravachanam cha tad vitmaran artham. Pravachan is so that we don't forget that. Forget what? This vitmaran artham can be applied to Swadhyaya also. So that constant study is that we don't get distracted from the goal of life. You try. Every day when we study, Either you are attending a weekly study class or you are doing your daily study or coming for this regular Upanishadha Gita classes, whatever it is. And one month don't do anything. You see the quality of thought. You observe and you will see. Suddenly there is inspiration is gone, petty things take over, mind gets disturbed. It keeps happening. <coughs> So many times we don't realize that because we are doing the sadhana or because we are studying, because we are in touch with this kind of noble and inspiring thought, our mind is lifted to a greater height. Ordinary things don't bother us that much. But the moment that inspiration oozes out, we are back to where otherwise we would have been. <coughs> So this study and this pravachan is a subtle sadhana and it, it has a very subtle effect also. Many people don't even realize that. They keep saying that what Srinamisham, they keep talking, talking, we have only talks and we have discourses and we have study classes. Kut seva karna chahi. This is called Jnana seva. Which not many people are even equipped to do. So, there is enough and more social service also that is happening. Education service also happening, cultural service happening, but this service of knowledge, and this is Jnan Seva, which helps to keep the minds of people inspired, uplifted. And if regularly this is done in the, in the society, if the students, the youth, everyone takes up to that, so many things will change. 
the whole country today needs visionary people people who are able to have this attitude of nation about self that selflessness comes from where from the study of the shastra <clears throat> devakarana ji said that gurudev also repeated that they said that make a bundle of your selfishness and throw it into the ocean then get into the field of service and if i have hundreds of people in 10 years time we can change the face of the whole earth or she said not even india how did these great masters live like that because of the power of the study power of the conviction and absolute selflessness they did <clears throat> so swadhyay is meant for that pravachan is meant for that so that we constantly remember that what is the goal of life avismarana artham the very nice sentence they said that uh, problems are that which we see <coughs> problems are that which we see when we stop seeing our goal so when we stop seeing our goal of life then so many problems arise and then we make a mess of our life and we don't know how to handle it and then when we come back to scriptural study we wonder oh god why did i do this so constantly to be in touch with the scripture even if somebody says you know sometimes it become mechanical doesn't matter at least you are still doing being in touch with sacred thought and so not drop that <clears throat> so avismarana artham he says and pravachan is to establish ourselves in the knowledge that we have gained because when we have to learn and share when we have to start sharing that is a different sadhana by itself because manan has to be done for it and communication has to be clear for it understanding of the student and or the opposite person and at which level that person's mind is or what is the doubt where is that person stuck all that has to be understood then the knowledge has to be given according to what is the need of the opposite person for which the knowledge must be digested fully here one cannot give it in the way one wants to give one has to give it in the way the other person can digest it so that is the sadhana by itself pravachan <clears throat> so pravachan will make the knowledge go deeper establishes in the knowledge and pravachan also is dharma pravridhyartham it is to preserve protect and propagate the culture very important aspect <coughs> i always give this example i keep saying again and again that we are bothered more about the extinction of the tiger but we are not bothered about the cultural extinction culture is decaying one by one by one every day day by day it is going down we are losing so many aspects of our culture but we are not aware of that so propagation of the culture is not only the duty of some teacher or some rishi or some sanyasi everybody's responsibility is to pass on the culture and that is why gurudev he started so many study classes he wanted the householders to become walking talking ambassadors of culture and he would call them white cloth missionary sanyasi sadhu sadhu sanyasi white cloth sadhu meaning 
when a grahasthi passes on that culture to their own children or goes ahead and takes a study class or a balvira class or a yoga kendra class the knowledge continues somebody asked guru dev you know in one letter they asked him that why have you come down from the himalayas go back there we will handle our life he said if you were capable of receiving this knowledge which is so subtle at the time when the rishis are meditating every day in the morning sitting in their own cave i don't have to come down i can go back to my cave but our culture has come decayed become decadent so much that unless it is explicitly spoken of and told it will not be preserved it will get Perished. Hence, I have to speak. And the day I feel that the culture revival has started, and it is a snowball now, I will go back to my cave. <coughs> It's a very powerful letter. Tomorrow I will read you the exact letter. But the whole purpose of one of the main purpose that Guru Dev started in my mission was this cultural revival. that we must know the glory and our whole culture is based on the upanishad scientific and beyond science also is upanishad so this knowledge must be shared with people it is a decadence in our culture that a few people thought that this knowledge is meant exclusively only for the brahman and they made themselves as the custodians of the veda and kept everything in sanskrit only and denied access to other people and that this is a sacred knowledge and only a few people are entitled to it and others are not they are not sacred they are not divine all that is a decadence in the culture so in our own way we have to start properly take a class study and that is a sadhana otherwise there is a danger of we becoming professional listeners any lecture in the city i am there My attendance is there. What is the point? <coughs> Professional listener wants to know this. Because in listening is very easy. What you have to do? Nothing. Come and sit. And you have all the freedom to sleep also. And some people come to Upanishad lecture because they don't get sleep in the home. <laughs> keep asking the teacher what next that's the board over here okay bar atma board atma board over here okay bar ye uske baad what next which in text so the teacher also is a immature teacher will feel ki are my students are so interested are they are only happily enjoying manner that you are doing you have to study you have to listen you have to learn you have to reflect you have to come and share gurudev was very clear he knew what a visionary master he was he put the whole study scheme to complete which it will take you at least 25 years <laughs> but he said after first three books you have to become a sevak after you finish kindle life bhajan govindam and tatva bodh you have to start a class and he said your sadhana is you start a class you study in one class and you teach in one class that is your sadhana if you do that then that is swadhyaya pravachane cha otherwise it is only shravanam 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 what happens we don't know. and so many times the discussion is will not on will not be on brahman it will start with brahman and land up in politics <laughs> so study and teach study and teach that will keep us focused then you know the difficulty of a teacher also remember that mm-hmm. otherwise we don't know you are sitting in the chair happily we just i think the speaker is not that good <laughs> that was much better 
कई रोज तो आती थी तो स्वाध्याय प्रवचन प्रवचन साधना इज अट अ डिफरेंट साधना मच ग्रेटर देन इवन पूजा जप उपवास व्रत तीर्थ यात्रा परिव्राजक मच 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 ग्रेटर देन एनी ऑफ दी साधना इज स्वाध्याय एंड प्रवचन and in that if you do it systematically then the all the more better step by step one by one tatva bodh asana bodh bhagavanna mukdesha sadhana pantakam one by one by one that books are studied and taught maximum what will happen if you start a class people will stop coming that's all how does it matter you should start and so swadhyay and pravachan both these very very important sadhana they will keep us focused we will not forget and the what shankara charya said dharma pravritya tha so guru dev taught all of us he created the sandipani much before he created sandipani the study groups were created actually study groups were going on even before sandipani was created so his vision was to start sharing this knowledge so a few people gathered and that time there were no seva training courses and classes and none of that today we have so many things we have so many books how he started you just think about it alone he started and people were inspired they learned a few books from him and then he would encourage them now you start sharing with other people and they would start their regular weekly study class and yearly once only guru dev used to come and do a yagna how to contain their continue their inspiration throughout study class and slowly slowly the yajna commentaries were translated the books came out and then the study scheme got made all that guru dev did because the main focus of chinma mission is this gyan sadhana this is gyan seva this is swadhyaya and pravachan because when we teach somebody and they pass it on from there they teach somebody else each one becomes a sevak in a class The one of the duties of the seva is to identify such people who can further continue and encourage them to take those classes. After three, four books are over, they should start the basic test. Then that first book which they have studied, Kindle Light, when they start taking, that will go deeper into them. That will open up their minds even for the higher books which they are studying in their own study class. so that way when we do this this is called a ripple effect one teaches the other another teaches another ten this ten teach another ten so it will go on and that parampara is what guru dev has said and that is the rishi parampara guru shishya parampara that has been coming down because of which we are having this knowledge so it is also a part of our rishi runa our debt to the rishi to give it back how do we give back to the rishi we whatever we do is not enough to give back our gratitude to the rishis only thing we can do is propagate this knowledge and support all those initiatives where this knowledge is being propagated because people who support such initiatives are very few because they not many even realize the importance of the knowledge of vedanta the knowledge of hindu culture so those who realize they must come forward and propagate and support the such initiative so this is swadhyay and pravachan by itself both these are their uh, the sadhana and they are complementary to each other and please remember the order huh? first is swadhyay then pravachan there are some people who want to do pravachan before swadhyay <laughs> That is not pravachan. That is confusion only. <laughs> so adhyaya first, and those six things that we spoke about, so adhyaya, that has to happen. Then pravachan has to happen. So adhyaya pravachan echa. So Shankara Chaudhary, having said that, he also calls this as Brahma Yajna. In his Bhashya, he says in the third line. प्रवचनम अध्यापनम ब्रह्मयज्ञो वा 
They call it Brahma Yajna. Of all the different types of yajnas which are there, in the Gita Bhagavan gives us twelve types of yajnas which are there. That is the that is the adapted version. In the Vedic times, literally the rituals used to be there, yajna. And people used to give a lot of importance to those. Of all the different rituals and the yajnas which are mentioned, all meaning the, all the spiritual practices, this is a subtle mode. This is called Brahma yajna. Why? Because Sarvam Karma Kilam Parsha Jnane Parishamapyate. Because all actions finally culminate in the knowledge of the self. And this Swadhyaya and Pravachan is a direct means to that knowledge of the self. Where the Ahuti is of the Avidya. In the fire of Brahma Vidya, the Ahuti of Avidya. And the person realizes that Supreme Brahman. So it is a yajna that we, everyone is doing. And any attempt to pass on this Brahma Vidya is a yajna. Remember, pravachan does not mean that somebody must organize a lecture and so many people should come and then I will talk. That is one meaning of pravachan. But pravachan otherwise it literally means sharing. So if we are doing this play called Adrishya, through Adrishya we are imparting Brahma Vidya. The third module of Adrishya is Brahma Vidya. That also is Brahma Yajna. It is not just theatre and some acting. But it is a medium through which the same Brahma Vidya is imparted especially to those who require more dynamic expression. Who will not absorb it just by listening. They have to see something more dynamic. So whether it is a study class that we take or whether it is doing a cultural performance or sometimes we take them to a, what we say, suppose we go to a pilgrimage. Next year, this year we are going to Uttar Kasi and then Gangotri and Gomu. Now, when we go that way, we want to become aware of those places. So the idea is not to do sightseeing. Idea is to be in the Himalayas, to experience what it is to live in the Himalayas, what was the culture that the Rishis had, what kind of conditions they lived in, how did they manage to do this kind of tapasya. All that is a part of sharing. Sharing can be done in so many ways. It is not only sitting and talking. Gita chanting competition. If you are teaching Gita chanting to somebody, that itself is a Brahma Yajna. So it's, a, it's a sharing. Samskar also is being put into the child's mind for the Gita. So, Pravachan is a very broad word. One should not limit Pravachan only to talking. On email, if you are answering somebody's doubt, that also is a pravachan. That also is sharing. So there are different ways in which the knowledge is shared. Pravachan word in, imbibes in itself all these different methods of sharing the same Brahma Vidya. And then that is called as a Brahma Yajna. So more of this we will see tomorrow where this Ritam Chaswadhyaya Pravachan is all these twelve times why it is said that we will take up tomorrow. Now what we should do is this if you know if we have to continue I mean we, when we want to do this uh, chanting chanting takes about twelve to thirteen minutes. So we can start off at seven o'clock and let the chanting go on at seven so that we will start the class at 7.15 because the chanting is required and we should do every day. <clears throat> Om Puramada Puramadam Puram Puram Dachate Puramasya Puramadaya Puramiva Vashishyate Om Shanti